y'all. It is your boy, Veli. Two wise back with another video and today I have a really special video and it's a little different stylistically depending on how you watch my other videos but I have an album review for whole lot of red so this may be fast it may be long who fucking knows but you got a playboy cardi super fan who's just sat here and listened to the album two times in a row back to back fucking front to back here with his fresh thoughts on the album non-biased fresh thoughts on the album um yeah for the most part i feel like that um this album uh does not fulfill what we know cardi can do like i feel like uh all of cardi's fans know like cardi can do way 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 better than this album i'm talking way better than this fucking album like I mean, um, a lot of the songs I didn't uh, hate. It was actually a bunch of songs that I really enjoyed a lot. Like, the first, like, I, I didn't like Go To... Alright, we'll start off with this. I didn't fuck with Go To The Moon like that. I loved the snippets and the remastered fan-made edits much more than I liked that song. That song... It was something that was super underwhelming about that song. I don't know if it was the start with Kanye and him rapping over a majority of a fruity fucking beat that had no bass in it at all, nothing in it, like, that we knew the song would have on Cardi's part, at least. Um, it had none of that on Ye's part. As cool as Ye's verse was, it wasn't fantastic. Like, people are saying, like, Jay carried, Cuddy carried. It wasn't all that great, honestly. But it was very fulfilling to hear Ye's voice on a Cardi song. No, I can't lie about that. And then when you hear the beat drop, you go like, okay, we're, 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 this is probably the real intro here. Okay, we're, we're here, we're here, we're here. We're listening a whole lot of Red. Then the fucking beat just drops. And then Cardi's just rapping over a fucking air spray in the background. Like, you don't even hear anything. It's no beat anymore. Like, soon as the soon as the shit gets good, too. Like, soon as he cuts off the snippet parts a lot on these songs, it just, it's like he gives you no outro on a lot of these songs. Like, you know how a lot of songs gives you the outro to breathe, you know? If you're on my channel a lot, you know that I use a lot of outros to do my featuring Veli portions of the video, which is me freestyling over the beat I just listened to, you know? Cardi had no room to do featuring Vellies. Like, I was listening to the album, and there was no room at the end of the outros. There was no room. It was barely in the ro uh, any room in some of the intros on these songs, man. It just di it didn't feel like Cardi a lot. It, it just did not. But I will say, the album started off really hard with the beats, the shit caught me off guard, especially that first song, dude. It sounded a lot like New Tank, how the beat sounds on that. Um, but yeah, Go to the Moon was a real letdown for me, man. Go to the Moon was one of the songs I was really looking forward uh, to. That snippet was so fucking fire. If you're a Playboy Cardi fan, you know he's always wanted to be on top of the building. And I'm not just referring to the song. I'm referring to the old throwback videos of him literally talking about he knows he made it if he's at the top of the building type shit. So he's at the top of a building on this snippet, and he's snippeting the the new shit, you feel me? Like, you feel like you came up with Cardi Conda. Um, but yeah, that snippet let me down so much. But let's move on from that goddamn song. Um, I feel like the album was pushing a, a lot of fast-paced, hard beats, a lot of fast-paced, hard-tempo Cardi songs, like how cash shit is like if you've heard of cash shit uh of Car uh, cash cardi or i said of cash cardi nigga what are you talking about if you've heard cash shit from playboy cardi i believe it's a leak a lot of songs are like that song but the thing is if you listen to cash shit five times in a row you find yourself overwhelmed so with cardi he throws about three to four super heavy bass bangers in your face to start off this album. 
And a lot of people can't take that. A lot of people, when they dive into albums, they want to dive in melodically, slowly, and then slowly make their way up. What Cardi did is he started off hard and let motherfuckers hear that shit. I don't know. A lot of the beats seemed uh, overwhelming for as much as he was saying. Like, he'd do his traditional Cardi shit. Like, he'd, he'd say, the same sh- say the same thing over and over on, like, a hook or something. But then it's like something's missing. I don't know exactly what it is because I've only heard it two times. But uh, the ad libs were spot on. I feel like the ad libs have not mi- they have not missed a beat. Cardi's ad libs will always be top notch. I feel like the ad libs were phenomenal in this album. You could say whatever you want about the songs. You go back and listen to them ad libs in that song. It may change your whole perspective on it. I know sometimes ad libs change ad libs ad libs change my perspectives on songs, so I would not be surprised if the same thing happened for you guys. But I feel like all of the production is phenomenal on this thing. I don't feel like there's any misses production wise. I feel like all of the producers stepped the hell up. And speaking of that, I don't know who produced any of these songs. I know Richie's in here. I know Wheezy's in here, and I know uh, Pierre's in here. And Wheezy produced Go to the Moon. Wheezy, why did you cut off the bass at the end like that? (sighs) But yes, uh, I feel like these songs would be a lot more enjoyable at like maybe a concert, maybe a a live show, uh, same shit, a live show, concert, a festival, Rolling Loud, some shit like that, I feel like these songs would be 10 times more enjoyable, like if Cardi were to uh, snippet one of these songs at a show, like towards like October or something this year, if COVID's not going on, people are probably going to hear the bass on that song, like, dude, you need to drop this, (gasps) excuse me, Dude, you need to drop this. It's something about when Cardi leaks shit and snippet shit, it 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 it, it puts it up here. The song could, pro- could probably be down here if he released it regular, but it's something about them leaks and them snippets that just make it so hard. I don't know, but this album proves it a lot, a lot, a lot. Now, let's get into the features that were promised to us, okay? We were promised Uzi. Well, Uzi promised us Uzi, so maybe he's talking about the deluxe. Uh, um, Cardi teased Posty. He teased Travis. And he teased... Well, he didn't tease, but there were some snippets from earlier this year we didn't hear, like, Money and Drugs. Money and Drugs, I'm falling in love. That's all I wanted to hear, man. That is the number one song I wanted to hear, man. That's not on here. I feel like that's going to be on the Deluxe. I feel like Cardi is going to drop this Deluxe, and it's going to be every damn song we've been wanting to hear, man. I really do feel like it, bro. I really do feel like it because you just don't you don't anticipate something for two years like this just to drop some experimental shit, okay? Now, Tyler, now you, you guys are probably looking at me like, dude, you have Cherry Bomb in the background. How hypocritical. Tyler went through the exact same thing when he dropped Cherry Bomb. He didn't drop a project in two years. He dropped Cherry Bomb. People thought it was mid. A year later, two years later, people are looking at this thing as a classic, an alternative classic. I'm telling you guys. Sometimes you just got to let things breathe. You can't go off the first listen sometimes. But yes, I feel like, hmm, I feel like uh, we need that deluxe. We need that deluxe because I feel like it would, it would grant more appreciation on this thing as much as people are bashing it. I've seen on Twitter and stuff for the verses, the hooks. And some people are even bashing the beats, which I don't understand at all. The beats are phenomenal. You cannot go in on these beats. These beats are crazy, crazy. But yeah, uh, we need those features, man. We need those features on the Deluxe. We need that Deluxe to be phenomenal to save Cardi's career because this can kill his career because he hyped this thing up to the absolute top. He hyped this thing up so much that Mario Judah's career was on the line for this damn thing. 
Nigga, that's a whole nother artist that has nothing to do with Cardi. My name, do you understand how much this thing was, hy was hyped up for? It was... He hyped this thing up for, what, 859 days, okay? You can't be doing that and then drop some experimental shit. Motherfuckers are not going to fuck with that. If people are waiting for you, they're going to want to hear the Cardi that you left. The Cardi that you left us with. We're going to want to hear what happened to that nigga. Where is that nigga? Where is that Cardi at? Where that nigga go? That's what everybody's wondering when they hear that shit, Cardi. Uh, like I said, all of the production was great. I feel like if you go back to some of the ad libs, um, they remind me a lot of Die Lit. Like the do 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 do. Like those ad libs, the pee pee. Bro, a lot of ad libs he was doing from Die Lit. I swear to God, if you guys go back and listen, you will hear a lot of them, and I guarantee it will change your perspective on at least that verse or those two bars. You know. I know a lot of people don't like this album. Uh, I actually kind of liked it. Uh, I gave it a 7 out of 10 initially. After my second hearing, I kind of wanted to drop it just a little bit. Just a little bit. But, I don't know. I think 7 out of 10 is a very good, you know, a very good spot for me not being sure yet. I can always change it, you know. Um, but it's leaning towards six. It's leaning towards six. It's leaning towards six. Until I heard New Tank. New Tank, it was, like how I said the snippets are up here, New Tank for me was right up there, dude. I love New Tank. New Tank was so good. It lived up to the snippet hype, in my opinion. I feel like New Tank secured that seven spot for me and basically was like, all right, you're not dropping down to a six. New Tank was actually very good. Um, I feel like Teen X uh, was a bit of a letdown because of his voice. And it seems like he's almost not trying. Like that, like that shit seems like you're not trying when you do that shit, bro. Compared to the shit you used to do, it really seems like you're not trying when you do that type of shit. And that's super misleading to your audience, man. You can't be doing that half-ass shit and then expect people to always fuck with it. Of course, people are going to fuck with it when you first do it. But if you continuously do it, people aren't going to fuck with it. Ask Mario Judah with him doing a whole lot of red bullshit. At first, people were fucking with it. Fucking with it. Fu okay, it's getting boring. Okay, okay, it's getting old. Can we get the old shit? All right, what are you doing? Type shit, you know? People want the old Cardi, man, and I don't blame them anymore, bro. I really don't, man. I really don't. I feel like feature of uh, uh, Future's feature wasn't even that noticeable. Like, I heard the thing twice, and all I remember from Future is hearing him. Uh, I don't remember anything from Future, bro. I don't. I don't. It wasn't memorable at all. Cardi, the way he was tweeting that future, man, you'd think this nigga had the fucking verse of the year, my nigga. Vamp Anthems looped sample was phenomenal. That is one of the best production um anything I've heard in a minute, man. I love that 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 uh it was like this vampiric piano low sample that was phenomenal i loved it so much how cardi was writing it now that was probably one of the most experimental songs in the whole thing but that is how you do experimentation right there not going too far not being too half ass sticking to your shit you know like it's like do more shit like that you know but towards the end of the album we got more of a melodic cardi even though he was giving us little sprinkles of it throughout the whole thing, towards the end of the album, we get a more melodic, a more um, down-to-earth Cardi, if you would. Um, I feel like uh, he could have done a lot more melodic shit, and I feel like it would have balanced the album out a lot more, and people would be a lot less pissed. But let's get to that neon, bruh. Neon. Is my favorite leak from Cardi of all time. I love this song. It is one of my favorite songs from him. Top three easily. And I loved this version. But it was something off. 
something weird, something about it. It's similar to how Peep fans are, you know? When Peep fans finally got, like, the the flawless production, it sounded off, you know? The, the, the music sounds a little different. So, when you get a fully produced Cardi leaked song, like Neon, or, um... Place another one, another top three, another top three leaks of mine from Cardi. Literally, Place and Neon are like literally the two songs out of any other leaks that I wanted on this thing, and they both are on it. With that being said, Place, I feel like the ad libs could have been a bit better because the ad libs on the original Place are phenomenal, but I feel I hear new ad-libs on Neon and Place, which shows that he added more to it, and you gotta appreciate that, even though he barely added to it. I mean, on Place, it's this fat-ass pause in the beginning, and I don't know what the hell that was. I thought my computer died. I don't know what the hell was going on. But, uh, yes, um, Punk Monk is one of my favorite songs on the album. I love how low and slow-paced it gets after such a fast-paced album, it feels like, with a bunch of short songs and long hooks, it feels like. Um, I feel like Punk Monk was one of my favorite songs. It reminded me a lot of Cash Shit, well, at least the beat did. Um... Then again, a lot of the beats kind of reminded me of Cash Shit, like with that heavy do 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 bass line, you know. Uh, a lot of beats reminded me of Cash Shit, so uh, yeah, that kind of takes away the uniqueness of that song. But <laughs> Punk Monk, I really liked that song, man. I loved how slow it was. It seemed like Cardi had a chance to fucking breathe listening to that song out of all the other songs and shit, man. But, um,. Uh, on That Time has to be the most catchiest song out of the whole album. D-R-O-K, wait, wait, D-R-A-C-O, eh, D-R-A-C-O, eh, dude, that has to be the most catchiest song, um, out of the whole thing. Um, there was a lot of, well, I don't know if it was a lot of spelling, but I remember Cardi spelling out more words other than this. Am I the only one? Did he? Yeah, he did. He definitely did. I remember thinking to myself, how many times is he going to spell out something, my nigga? How many times is this nigga going to spell out? <laughs> I remember thinking to myself that. But, uh, yeah, that was definitely the most um, memorable hook, in my opinion. I really liked that hook, and it was very, very... It, it stuck to my brain. It, it was... Hard to get out once I heard that shit, but, um, yeah, I really like that song. Um, it was a lot of retro 8-bit beats, or samples, I should say, on these beats. Even on some beats where the bass was heavy, he, or the producer, would sneak in some tropical sounds or some 8-bit sounds in the background to even out the production. That's why I really appreciate the production on this thing. It can go from fast-paced to mashy to slow and ominous to sampled fucking... Like, it, it, the production on this thing, I feel like, will be appreciated a lot more down the line when more people listen to it, when reviews start to come out, when people start being a lot less biased and start stop going off of the hype and all that shit. I feel like... um. People will really, really, really appreciate this production, man, because it is phenomenal. It's out of this world. And I saw somebody tweet that the production was ass. You got to be the most simplest, stupidest motherfucker to think that this production is ass. Motherfucker, the production, I don't want to say it, but I feel like, nigga, if you put the production, like, you know, Tyler, the creator, sometimes he releases, like, full projects of the instrumentals of his projects, like, he did this with Cherry Bomb, he released the alternate album with just instrumentals, I feel like Cardi should do the exact same thing, because when, Car when Tyler did that, people appreciated Cherry Bomb so much more after that, so much more, now you can't find a motherfucker who goes like, 
oh, Cherry Bomb was fucking ass. Da, 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 da. Motherfucker, listen to these instrumentals and tell me that shit again. This is Tyler, the creator, sitting in his fucking house, making beats and putting it on Spotify to alter the outlook of his album. I think Cardi should do the exact same thing. Not saying that the album's ass, not saying that the instrumentals are carrying, but I feel the album would get much more appreciation if he showed off those beats. But let's end. We got to end this video, man. It's been 20 minutes talking about this thing. Um, I'm going to end it off with talking about a few more songs. But um, Sky is a beautiful song. I love that song. It sounds a lot like old Cardi. If you go listen, all right, don't, if you haven't heard this and you're an old Cardi fan, go listen to Sky. Tell me that does not sound like old Cardi with just the higher baby voice. He's doing the flow. He's doing the what, yeah, what, 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 what. He's doing that. He's doing all of that. Everything on that song. I'm telling you, Sky is the song for the old Cardi fans. I feel like if we want old Cardi back, we have to tell him to make more songs like Sky and calm down with the baby voice, my nigga. You got a baby. You don't got to do the baby voice no more. I love the baby voice. But nigga, I want the fandom to be together. I don't want us to be separated, my nigga. I hate that shit. I hate it. But... I feel like towards the end of the album, Cardi reflects on his departure with his baby moms or whatever girl he's talking about in the album as to where the end of Die Lit, he's talking about falling in love and being with the girl. So this is a crazy switch to me, man. Um, I feel like when he's talking about this girl or whatever, he has a, a really laid back flow. Um, it's a super traditional Cardi flow, um, but the production takes away from it towards the end of the album. I feel like you get a lot more of a melodic Cardi towards the end. Um, he even hints at not being on social media because of his ops. <laughs> yeah, right. You just don't like fucking social media, Cardi. Come on. <laughs> I feel like the last two songs were Cardi practically singing to us. I feel like the production fit him singing very well. Um, and yeah, I feel like those were that was a great choice, uh, making uh, the last two songs melodic, as I feel like the first two songs should have been melodic too. Um, I also feel like overall, now that we've gotten all the songs and all the shit out the way, I feel like uh, this thing should have been shorter, okay? I feel like this thing should have had sh uh, a lot less shorter songs because I don't know. And I feel like some of these features were pointless. Like, why Why did you have Future? Why did you have... I feel like Cuddy, at first I thought Cuddy was just going to be humming throughout the whole song. I was about to lose my mind. But he actually started rapping. I'm like, okay. Ye's verse was like a 12 bar. I feel like these hooks... I mean, not hooks, these verses and features, um, they just weren't what I was looking for, man. I'm ready for deluxe, bro. I'm ready for these features, man. I thought we were going to get bombarded with features on this, and the deluxe was going to be a solo Cardi thing. Well, it's looking like this was more of a majority solo Cardi thing, and the deluxe is going to be drowned with features, because... I don't know, man. It, it's just like this thing felt empty, man. It just felt empty, bro. It felt like something was there. It felt like something, something could be made out of it. And it just felt like it, it's missing something, bro. It's missing something. I feel like the the features more than anything could have stepped up more. I feel like Ye could have kept going on his verse and they could have made the beat longer Especially since fucking Go to the Moon ended like that. It ended so fast. Um, but yes, for the most part, I would say Cardi should have shrunken this album a bit, taken out a couple songs. I feel like he should have taken out that future feature and that song. Oh, he should have taken that shit and threw it out the fucking window. As much as I love that beat switch during the middle of his hook. 
Um, yes, as a, a super fan, I am a little underwhelmed. I feel like the beats and shit really cater to Cardi fans. If you have been to festivals and shit, and you know how he gets when those beats come on at the festivals. I feel like those cater to us in that way, but if you're going to make an album that everyone's anticipating, even fans that aren't Cardi fans, you got to make something that's going to cater to everyone, especially the niggas that was riding with you in the beginning. Like, if you look at every artist, they hint at little stuff that they used to do. Like, Tyler, the creator, he may have changed a lot, but um, he still raps his ass off, especially when people call him out on it. He will rap his ass off. I'm telling you. Um, yeah, I can. I understand why Cardi fans are underwhelmed. I get it, but I also could understand why somebody loves this thing. I get it, but I hope that you guys understand that I'm right in the middle almost. I'm just waiting for the deluxe. I can live off of maybe the 11 songs that I enjoyed on this album um, until then, since Cardi doesn't drop a breath of anything ever. So I am very satisfied with this album in that case. But for from a musical critic standpoint, I feel like this thing is standing at a 6 or 7 out of 10, hands down. No, nothing more, nothing less. I feel like six or seven is the perfect place to put it because if you're going to put something at five or below, the production has to be ass. The mixing has to be ass. The features have to be ass. The music videos have to be ass. The roller has to be ass. You know, the cover has to, like, everything has to be ass. I feel like six is a great spot because I feel like the aesthetic, the theme, the cover, some of the, well, uh, Cuddy, and Kanye's verse, eh, I feel like those lived up, but I feel like you got to do way more than what Cardi did to get a fucking eight, let alone a 10, you know? So I feel like a six and a seven is a great spot to put this. I may do a re a new uh, review on the same album in a few days after I'm like, uh rested and shit and heard it again after a long day you know i feel like maybe just maybe i might rank it a little higher because i am a super fan and i do like a lot of snippets a lot of leaks a lot of baby voice snippets a lot of baby voice leaks yes sir i love it all but that was it for my album review this has almost been 30 minutes of me just talking to a camera i wonder how much of this i'm going to edit because um, a lot of my supporters aren't in the Cardi like that. A lot of my supporters are in the Peep and Ghost Main, Suicide Boys, Puya, people like that. We stay in the underground, you know. But yes, if you guys enjoyed this video and my album review, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It has been your boy Veli. Two Y. See you guys in the next one. And see you guys on Peep Part 5. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry fucking Christmas. We need that old Cardi back. Everybody tweet Cardi. We need more songs like Sky. And while you're at it, exterminate the baby voice. See you guys. <laughs>